is perhaps the craziest mash, the craziest blowout, that's for sure, of the Pro Chess League thus far. The Gotham Knights have blown open the gates against the Shanghai Tigers. 9-3 to three the final score. And Levy Rosman, the one and only, is joining us to share his thoughts. Levy, congratulations. That was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And I, listen, I, I will uh, I will thank you for having me on because I, I am like the uh, the cheerleader and the creator behind this team. But uh, all credit to the players and the manager of the team because the strategic lineup that we put in this week was absurd and the performance of all the players was completely unbelievable. But I will happily be our glorified cheerleader on camera because just un just unreal, honestly. Uh, what a performance. Absolutely not what we expected. Yeah, I mean, Levy, you, you're you're the captain. That's what you got to do. Take the credit, man. You uh, you put the lineup forward. Now, I wanted to ask you about that lineup because obviously it worked wonders today. You just kind of came out ahead on all the 50-50s. But what do you think about some of the lower board performances like Alina and Bortnick getting in there and scoring crucial points for your team? Bortnick was wild. He like I when you guys had me on in the second round. I it's kind of everything we wanted. He's it's sort of what went into planning a lot of our lineups. So we we looked for young, talented players. We also looked for guys like Bortnik, who is criminally underrated in classical chess, in my opinion, uh, and in the manager's opinion as well. And uh, we just didn't know if Bullet and Blitz would translate to Rapid. And man, it did. Like, yeah. his nerves got in the way in that first game, right? He hung the bishop, but second game was absurd, and that could have gone either way. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Today, a lot of, a lot of things went our way, but he was... He was great. And Alina's playing style was also super, super aggressive, fun to watch. And she almost deserved that second game, but Wei Yi did what 2700s do. Uh, but it paid off in that third game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you can't ask for much more. It's like everything went right that could have gone right today. Yeah, Alina mm -hmm. played amazing against Wei Yi. I mean, she was basically one move away, which is crazy. I mean, it's anytime your board four gets a chance to beat the opposing side's board one. At what point, Levy, in the, in the final round, I, I guess technically it's round three, uh, at what point did you start suspecting that a 4-0 victory might be possible? Uh, I, I didn't. I mean, I, I thought it was going to happen in the second round because everybody <laughs> yeah. was doing so well, right? Like, it, it literally almost did happen in the second round. I mean, Hikaru just... It really helps when five minutes into the round, Hikaru already got you a point, right? Like, I don't know if the <laughs> players know that, but let me just tell you as the commentator, uh, I don't. I, I haven't followed the chronological order of the chess bra matches, but like... I'm sure it's the same, you know, oh, Magnus won. All right, we got a one-point lead, great. Uh, <laughs> it's a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really nice feeling, and he was taking care of business, like, as if he had, like, somewhere to go, like he had a business meeting to attend. Uh, and uh, uh, the rest of the games, in the last round, the, the way he lost just came out of nowhere because it looked like he had a nice position from the opening, and um, uh, I, I was confident Alina was going to get it done, but it, it it was so wild, man. Like, it, it, it was literally almost a chance that we won two games back-to-back, -back, two matches, 4-0. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. I've, I did not expect that going in. I was super nervous uh, to play Shanghai. And, yeah, team pulled through. I think that's the, the thing, Levy, with, like, uh, you know, teams that are 2-0. You look at them and you're like, okay, these guys are never losing a match. Like, these teams look insane. And then, uh, you know, based on the lineup that you put forward in a certain week, it could just work wonders as as it did for for you guys in this round like uh you know going into this and now seeing the result levy i put you on the spot here do you think you're one of the absolute favorites in the in the pro chess league so that was still nah. tbd <laughs> uh i was gonna say that was still tbd uh, i think before this match today but uh yeah i mean after seeing today it's kind of hard to argue i mean we fielded a lineup today that just so, like my manager was explaining this to, to, to our stream, you have to have a lineup that's 2550 after all of the rating adjustments. Mm -hmm. And our lineup is 2549.75. Uh, and much like, better. <laughs> it literally, like if, if any player was one or two ELO above their current rating, it would not work. And unofficially, it's over 2600. So I think on paper, we've had like two, if like the top three best lineups, but that doesn't always translate to points because it, you have to be a good rapid player. You have to be good under pressure. You have to be good against people higher rated than you. So uh, if it works, it works, you know, but there's other teams that are perfect. And, um, you know, if the bras field the three stack again and, you know, Eric doesn't have a rough day, you guys might get 10 points in a match. So I, Anything can happen. That's like, I'm happy we went 3-0, and but there's still really, really good teams uh, in this league. So I'm, I just want to keep, you know, 
keep doing it the way we've been doing it. Right. Well, I mean, it's going in the right direction, Levy. We've got a couple of featured chat questions. You mentioned that it's not only about ratings, it's also about experience level and how good these players are in rapid time controls and under pressure. BJH13 asks, Levy, can you talk a bit about having a woman as strong as Alina Kashlinska on your team? How much of a boost uh, has that given you and how much of a boost will it give you as you get into the playoffs? We actually have, I don't know if it's on our official roster, if we made any adjustments, but we have like four women on the team, all of whom are really good. We might've had to remove one because she wasn't available, but we, we were gonna have Nurgul Salimova who's like winning every tournament in Bulgaria. She's like 20, 21, and she's probably gonna be a GM within a year or two. But unfortunately she had a lot of classical tournaments commi uh, committed to. Um, Buxa, Natalia Buxa, super strong. And we have like a young player in Kazakhstan who's 2200 and 2700 blitz and fits in with a three stack, right? So she would fit in with like a Hikaru Fedoseev and then like Shield, which is what we ran last week. And she had a rough, you know, she had a rough outing, but she was playing a lot of really good players. So uh, it, it, it really helps. I had no idea what was going to happen today in, in Alina's games. I, I didn't even know that she was so aggressive. Like, did you know that? Because I did. She she went after everyone's head every game, and she was winning against Wei Yi, and you know that it ultimately uh, paid off in that in that third game. So, uh, I I really like this lineup this week. We didn't know what to expect when when Bortney, you know, uh, Mikola was like, play the youngster. I don't know if I'm in as good as form as him, and I would say he's in pretty great form. I don't know what you guys think, but <laughs> yeah. he seemed to do pretty well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean it. Got a good team, good team of four, and we got Liam now, who's played only one match. So, uh, but I don't want to jinx anything. You know, we're in the playoffs, but that doesn't mean we won anything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it, it's a really impressive lineup, uh, Levy. I got another chat question for you, and I'm a big fan of this question. Would love to hear your take. Uh, Screws O2 asks question for Levy: Were you upset? that Bortnik was not immediately making a draw in the final game. Now, obviously, it was going so well for you that even if somehow, you know, disaster strikes, he loses, you're pretty much a favorite to win the match. But still, as a captain, you know, on looking there, were you, were you uh, thinking, hey, man, where's my draw? No, so there was something really funny. You can't contact the players during the match. Like, they don't know the score, but they have access to a spreadsheet. I'm not explaining this to you guys, just to the audience. Uh, they, they have a spreadsheet they can check. To have the scores and my man and my manager was like oh i forgot to send it to them this week <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were just cracking up like you know mccall is probably out here grinding a result has no clue what's going on in the match like, oh man like maybe if i lose this half a point we're gonna like lose the match or something and meanwhile just right. three you know three oh and uh maybe uh the chinese player uh Zhu Yi was like looking at man i gotta play for a win you know and uh it obviously backfired so uh no i wasn't too upset i mean it's hard to be upset when you're up eight three like you, sec you secured a playoff already, you know, so, uh, but no, um, you know, I, I don't think, I think Hikaru was a little, uh, a little rattled by the Alina Wei Yi game. People, you know, chat was relaying, like he was like watching it and, uh, but it's hard to be mad when you, you have a five point lead, I think in this format. Yeah. Yeah. That's can't unbelievable. Levy, final question, and we'll let you continue chilling on your stream. If you're the manager of the Shanghai Tigers, how would you handle a loss like the one that they just suffered? What would you be telling them? And would you be making any serious line of changes if you're trying to get them into the playoffs? Um, well, they have a very balanced lineup now, right? I think they just need, I, I, I'm actually surprised. They fielded two, the, the same lineup three weeks in a row because it had so much success, which obviously can't blame them. But I would figure against the Hikaru in another 2,700, like they would have, you know, they would try to find a way to field uh, Wei Yi and like Yu Yang Yi or Wei Yi. And uh, I, but I don't even think Yu Yang Yi is on their roster. I think it's like Ni Hua and I think maybe they have another player, but um, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 I think it's really hard to win the Pro Chess League without two 2700s, but 2700 rapid. Like Fedeseev is underrated. He's 2668, I think, classical, but over the board rapid, he's 2750. So, you need these short time control specialists that won't tank and that have like good openings that can kind of be more flexible in this 10 minute format. Um, that's all I would, I would say, but I, listen, I thought their lineup was ridiculously scary. Like I thought Ju and June could easily get two and a half or three. And I, like, I'm saying it, you, you have like some small moments in every single match and this match, literally every moment went our way. 
So sometimes that happens and sometimes it, it, you know, it happens the other way and momentum is everything. So, uh, but very tough to win, I think, without two players that are top 15, top 20. So, but I'm not the manager. I'm the glorified cheerleader. So I just come here and talk <laughs> about the team and Mr. Ostrovsky makes all the decisions. Well, Mr. Glorified Cheerleader, we appreciate all of the insight. This was such a fun match to watch. Congratulations on making the playoffs. We'll let you take your rest. But that was an amazing wire-to-wire -wire victory, Levy. Congrats, Congrats once again. Thanks, guys. Cheers.